Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to England Exchange, where it's the calm before the storm known as Peggy kicks her way literally into our lives. Because she's up next. And I'm hoping, probably futilely, but I'm hoping <laughs> maybe I'll like her a little bit more. But if she gossips again, she's going to stay where she is on my list. But we'll see. Well, let's introduce Peggy to Flynn, shall we? The door flew open. I mean, the door flew open. I gotta remember my husky male voice. <laughs> All right. I turn to see a diminutive girl with bright red hair, her foot out as if she just kicked the door clean off its hinges. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh. She looked at me, then at what I was holding in my hands. I threw it to the side of me, feeling my face turn red. I didn't- What are you doing in my room? Your room? This is my room. <laughs> this is my sneeze as well. I thought maybe I could talk over it. Didn't work. Anyway. Your room? But- She leaned out into the hallway, a confused look on her face. Oh, bollocks! So sorry, totally my fault. I picked the wrong door. Two down from the end, they said, and I picked the wrong end. Bit daft of me, wouldn't you say? I'm Peggy, and I'm starting as a student this term. Isn't that ace? I'm finally going to be in university, even if I had to wait for the later enrollment cycle. And good riddance, too. It was absolutely bonkers being stuck with my old form. There was this one girl, Cherise, who would go out pulling every night. And this other girl thought Prince Philip should be ruling instead of the Queen because women were inferior to men. I mean, can you believe that? And I had to live with that girl for so long. That's why I chose to come here instead of the student digs. I just couldn't do that all again in uni. And I couldn't afford to get a flat by myself because I spent all my money on a Christmas trip to Spain. Oh, I'm not a crazy spender, you know. I planned for months to have that trip and didn't spend a penny more than I budgeted. Just now, I'm skint. Gotta live in the moment, that's what they say. Eat, drink, and be merry. Anyways, I'd better get out of your hair, right? You're clearly very... Her eyes slid over to where I'd thrown the silken underwear. Busy, hmm? I, I'm really not. Well, have a good night then. She slammed the door shut, and I had the feeling the breath had been sucked out of my lungs. How could one person talk so much? At least she seemed friendly enough, and she was definitely from some part of England, judging by her accent and colorful language. Well, it seemed that was that. That, that is that. Until we run into her again. Alright. Time to make enemies with Brendan and friends with Aussie-ish. And, uh, yeah, let's call Jinsu and do this, because we haven't done that yet. I don't... But how do these... How do you put it? Okay. I really don't think I'm into guys. I really don't think I'm into guys. How will you know unless you try? I don't think it works that way. Alright. Um... Well, I guess we'll do this for now. Until Peggy leaves, anyway. The hostel had a dining area where everybody could eat, next to the kitchen. People could order in or could gather together to eat a group meal. With that in mind, I crept into the kitchen, hoping to find something simple I could make. When I entered, I discovered Angelo, Peggy, and Ashley were sitting around the larger table, each taking something from a platter of vegetables and noodles. Another guy I hadn't met before was also there. That must be Mark, the one Danny said was cute. I really hope you like it. I worked hard on it. It's free food. I'll definitely like it. You'd make a good wife, Ashley. <laughs> you think so? Ashley flushed as Angelo laughed heartily. <laughs> you belong in the Stone Age, Angelo. What? It was a compliment. She's not mad about it. That's beside the point! And that set them both off, shouting insults back and forth. Mark, sitting nearby, watched with wide eyes. I tried to figure out a way to casually approach and join the group, but I wasn't sure what to do. 
And it'd probably look bad if I just walked up and asked to eat some of their food, especially since I didn't help make it. Maybe it would be better to come back later and take a peek in the fridge. I started out of the kitchen, but before I could make it out the door, I locked eyes with Ashley. Oh, Flynn! Are you hungry? I made stir-fry if you want some. I'm sure there's plenty for all of us. Really? Are you okay with that? Of course! Despite Ashley's assurances, assurances I glanced at the others. Peggy and Angela were still at each other's throats, but Mark offered me a smile and gestured to the seat next to him. I sat down nervously. Thank you. It looks really good. Ashley got a plate from me and spooned food onto it while Mark got me a glass of water. Just can't comprehend that your way of life is totally... Maybe if you calmed down a little, it wouldn't be so... Don't mind them. They've been at it all day. Really? Yeah. It's a bit rough, but I'm sure they both mean well. Yeah, it's interesting to see people with such dynamic opinions. And you guys aren't going to stop them? I don't want to get involved. I don't like to fight with anyone. I glanced at Mark, who shrugged. Everything ends one way or another. I mean, these kinds of things are interesting to discuss, but as long as it's not directly affecting me, it doesn't have any meaning. What? What does that mean? There was an odd tension in the air. A few seconds later, I realized Peggy had stopped arguing with Angelo and was instead staring at Mark. How can you say that you don't care about anything that doesn't affect you personally? Does that mean, if you saw someone in pain, you wouldn't do anything to help them because it wasn't you who was hurting? Oh? No, that's not what I meant. I just meant that if how someone else's behaving isn't causing direct harm, or if it's just a theoretical concept that isn't harming anyone in practice that I can see, I won't bother with it. But theoretical concepts can harm people. I suppose. Well? Mark seemed to consider Peggy's point for a few moments and shrugged. I can't really be bothered. Oh! Peggy stood and grabbed her half full plate. I can't stand people like you! She marched off in a huff. And with that, we'll continue on our merry way. <laughs> There's Mark. <laughs> uh, that one. Um, I guess we should go back and have her grab our hands and so forth. I had just finished eating when Peggy sprinted into the dining room. Upon seeing me, she lunged for my hands. Flynn, I need your help. Uh, okay. With what? Danny has team tryouts today. Football tryouts. And I want to try, but I don't want to go alone. Scared I'll make an idiot of myself, do you know what I mean? I know you're into sport and we're part of some teams back in the States. Won't you go with me? Joining his team would be a great way to impress Danny and spend more time with him. And possibly Peggy as well. Sure, why not? Flynn, thank you so much. I knew I could count on you. We'd better get going then. Wait, it's happening right now? Of course, come on. Peggy took me by the hand, jogging down the street into the nearby park, explaining as she went. It's a university team, but not the university team. And we're allowed to go since we're technically part of the university, despite you not being from England, so it totally works out. Danny's the captain, as you'd expect from him, and the team is open to men and women, which is why we can both apply. The day was pretty mild for January, but it was still chilly outside. Though I suppose if we were going to be playing soccer, we'd warm up fast enough. She rounded a corner into the park and a set of bleachers appeared, along with a ragtag group of people nearby. Danny stood before them, hands on his hips. Next, we'll have a basic skirmish so I can get a feel for how you work together. Everyone nodded and assumed positions, which must have been assigned some time beforehand. Danny! Peggy waved enthusiastically and Danny looked at us in surprise. Hey, what are you two doing here? 
What do you think? We're here to try out for the team. A wry smile crossed his face. Are you now? Yes, we are. What, don't think we can do it? I didn't say that. If you're really up for it, you two can join the team on the right. Peggy, take over as goalkeeper. Flynn, you can be a forward. Uh, but... Will do! Peggy dashed away and I was left standing awkwardly in front of Danny, not sure what to do. Everything alright? I didn't exactly have much of a chance to get ready for this, and we just ran all the way here, and I was never on an official soccer team. I don't know what a forward does exactly. Well... Just kick the ball around and give it what you got. No pressure. He clapped me on the back, smiling. If it wasn't for his friendly and open attitude, I would have thought he wanted me to fail. For laughs. Hmm. So the skirmish happened. It was probably one of the most embarrassing things I had ever done. I wasn't used to being bad at sports. I had always had a knack for them and took to them easily. From track to swimming to basketball. Or so I thought. But soccer was something different. I wasn't as coordinated with my feet as I thought. The one time I got the ball and shot it at the goal, I hit Peggy smack in the face. Then her nose started bleeding, and I volunteered to walk her to the bleachers and take care of her. Danny, doubled over with laughter, agreed. So Peggy and I didn't make the team. No sweat off my back. I didn't need another mandatory meeting every other day. Well, maybe some other team will take us. Maybe they'll take you. I think I've had enough of joining. Oh. Hey, it was fun to try out. I just don't want to take up too much of my time with sports this year. I'm already tired out from working. Right. Well, next stop, volleyball. Volleyball? It made total sense for her hyper-personality. But not for her height. Oh, she'll figure it out. Alright, now I'm gonna run into you, Miss Jihyo. Oops. Sorry for interrupting your knocking, Peggy. Please knock again. The nice thing about living in the hostel was that, despite the thin walls, it was often perfectly silent. People were often working or at school, so it was easy to find peace and quiet. It was quiet enough to hear the birds outside my window, the wind howling through the cracks in the wood. Quiet enough to hear footsteps in the hallway. Rapid, heavy footsteps like someone was on a mission. A relentless pounding beat up my door, and in the time it took me to stand up from my desk and cross the room, it grew several decibels louder. I pulled open the door to find Peggy on the other end, eyes electric. Flynn! I need your help. Sign my petition, please! Um... what? See, our uni is far, far behind the times as far as the green movement goes. You'd think that a place of intellectualism and education would be concerned about the future of the world, the future of its very patrons, but no! No, it is left to those of us with common sense, desire, and passion to find a way to get our world out of this ridiculous predicament it's in. Our way of life is totally unsustainable! There's no way we'll be living like we do now in 30 years. Right now, we are pumping out cheap clothes just to throw them away in a year. We are stripping the soil of nutrients to grow food that we mostly waste. If we go on like this, nothing will grow, and the sea rise will drown the coastlines and we'll all have to eat nothing but insects. And you can bet your bollocks will be sorry that nobody invested in clean energy and we ended up running out of fossil fuels. She started speaking faster and faster and I simply tuned her out, instead watching the dynamic expressions on her face. I love this change between Flynn and Molly. <laughs> he just, like, I want to just watch spit fly out of her mouth. She didn't seem to have any idea what she looked like when she spoke. Her eyes getting wider and smaller, her mouth flying this way and that, the occasional chunk of spit flying from her mouth. Finally, instead of gesturing dramatically at the wall, she began to make eye contact with me again and I tuned back in. Even the smallest of actions, if made in a concerted effort by multiple individuals on a daily basis, should be able to help. It's easy to say it won't make a bloody dent, but that's a load of rubbish. 
If everyone who said something like that did what they were complaining about, even if they just got off their asses and voted for change, the world would end up being a much better place. So, will you sign my petition? Uh, I got a bit lost in the middle there. What's the petition for? I want the university to commit to using more renewable energy sources. London completely ignores solar power because of cramped roof spaces and poor weather. But we have big buildings and we can make it work. Ah, all that information just for a solar panel petition? Please, please, please sign it. I know you're the kind of person who believes in changing the future. And nobody else has signed it, so... She looks so sad saying it that I couldn't help but take pity on her. Sure, I'll sign. Yes, get in! The way she was dancing around and punching the air, you'd think she had entered a gladiatorial arena and managed to make it out alive. Do you think you might do me another favor? That depends a bit on the favor. Would you help me get signatures from everyone here? For some reason, I can't seem to sit anyone down long enough to talk to them. Oh, I knew the reason. I didn't want to bother anybody with this kind of thing. They definitely wouldn't like it, but it would make Peggy happy if I did. Sure, I'll help. Flynn, you are tops! You are the very best person I've ever met in my life. Ever! Take this! She miraculously materialized an additional clipboard and pencil from God only knows where and handed them to me. If you can just get Angelo and Mark, everything will be fine. I can handle the rest. They're too nice to say no. She gave me a light tap on the head, which required her to stand on her tiptoes, and sauntered off towards Danny's room. Nice. So, it was up to me. I found Mark first. I was surprised that Peggy didn't want to talk to him herself, but at the same time it made sense. He was a nice guy, but it was probably easy for him to come off as creepy, especially towards women. Don't get it. In any case, it took only a few minutes of explaining the purpose of the petition for Mark to point out every flaw in Peggy's plan, from funding to the disruption that construction would cause to the fact that the university already had a carbon-neutral goal statement. Regardless, I admire her spunk. I'll sign. With one signature down, I moved on to Angelo, who I found sprawled across the couch in the living room, a magazine on his face. Angelo? What? What has happened? Oh, it's just you. That was an intense reaction. Yeah, well, what did you want? I began to explain the purpose of the petition, but Angelo raised his hands as if physically pushing me out of his head. Nope. Nope! I'm not going to fall for any of that tree-hugger bullshit. You can find someone else to bother about with that, eh? And he turned on his heel and left the room. Well, one for two wasn't bad, right? Do you think... Do you guys, do you guys think... Angie only signed because Malia asked him. <laughs> I think he might have actually said as much in her route, but I kind of like that. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I caught up with Peggy later to deliver my results. So, how many signatures did you need anyway? I was going for 5,000. 5,000? But I'm not sure how possible that is anymore, so... No! I won't give up! I can't! The future of this beautiful Earth, the future of all of our lives depends on this! Thank you so much again for your help, Flynn. I'm glad you're willing to actually look at what's wrong with the world instead of ignoring it like most everybody else. She grabbed my hands and shook them warmly. I felt a blush coming on and pulled them awkwardly away. It was the least I could do. Good on you, Peggy. Best of luck. No luck needed. I've got drive, will, and a vision. What else do I need? As she disappeared down the hall, I began to wonder. What else really did she need? That girl could power three jet planes on will alone. I think she needs 5,000 signatures. 
All right, let's skip. Um, computing? Why not? Hi, G. Yeah, hi, Aussie. Um, I guess we'll go back and do this whole gardening shenanigans. Peggy, Danny, Angelo, and I were all eating lunch in the dining room when James loped through the doorway. You four, the front garden is a mess. Are you just gonna leave it like that? Pardon? I hadn't seen a garden anywhere around here. It took me a moment to work out that he meant the yard. That's not our responsibility, is it now? Yes, it is now. I want it clean by tonight or I'm throwing you out of your rooms. With that, he left. He can't be serious. He's not serious, right? You all haven't been here as long as I have. This is my second year. I'm sad to say he's done much worse. So immediately after eating, we discarded our plans for the day and went to the front yard. Despite the fact that it was the middle of winter, scraggly weeds were visibly growing over the flower beds and clumping up here and there in the grass. I stared at them, unsure of what to do. I didn't really have a yard back in New York. Danny shrugged, got down on his knees, and started pulling plants out of the ground. After a second, the other two went to different areas of the lawn and followed suit. I wasn't really confident enough to do it on my own. Who should I join? I knelt next to Peggy, who was muttering under her breath faster than I could keep up. Creepy old tosser thinks he can just do whatever the bloody hell he wants, so up himself and get lost in there. I swear to God, if I ever get my hands on him. Without meaning to, I burst into laughter. Peggy looked at me, offended. <laughs> Oi! What's the matter with you? Your accent. It gets so thick when you're mad, it's just... It's hilarious. Peggy frowned at me. Not a thing I can do about that, is there? No, it's not a bad thing. It's not. I think it's kind of cute, actually. Peggy flushed almost as red as her hair. Uh, let's see. I mean, I don't really know how to respond to that. You know, that's just nothing that people say. I forgot how fast this thing goes. I mean, thank you. It's not like it's... I mean, I don't really know what to respond to that. You know, that's not just something that people say, you know, and... Deep breath, Peggy. Breathe. Peggy stopped and took a deep breath. Oh. All right. Well... Ah, uh, thank you. That was nice of you. You're welcome. I smiled at her. Her eyes widened. Then she turned her attention to the plans and raged yet again. Out! Out, damned plot! She dove into the dirt, digging weeds out more like a dog than a gardener. It was all I could do to keep our area from winding up utterly barren. Hours later, we sat exhausted on the front walkway, wiping sweat from our brows. James came around the front, sipping from an orange drink in his hand. He glanced around the yard and nodded. It'll do. The alcohol on his breath almost stung my eyes. He jerked his head and we moved out of his way so he could get into the hostel. I hate that guy. Somehow, as a collective, we sighed. Oh. <sighs> You're not the only one. All right, there's Angie making pasta. And we're gonna have Ashley break plates, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know if I got enough, girl. <laughs> ah, all right, we're at the uh, football match. In early February, Danny's soccer team had their first match. He formally invited the entire hostel to come see it if they wanted, but let everyone know he wouldn't hold it against them if they didn't show up. Not surprisingly, not everyone wanted to go. In the end, Ashley, Peggy, and I walked to the park together, tiny flags in our hands. Ashley was such a nice girl that she couldn't possibly turn down the invitation, but Peggy seemed particularly excited about cheering for Danny. I knew Peggy and Danny were good friends, but seeing the way they interacted... 
I was a little jealous of them. I couldn't help but wish that Peggy was cheering for me instead. I hadn't been good enough to make the team, and I hadn't really wanted to be on it anyway, so it was silly to sulk about it now. Still, it would be nice to feel that someone appreciated me. Danny was a nice guy. He was smart, attractive, well-organized, he was constantly helping out around the hostel and looking after everyone. Of course, people would admire that. Maybe I ought to volunteer more. Woo! Go Danny! Danny, now dashing out onto the field for the first time, looked into the stands and saw us. He beamed and waved and Peggy waved frantically back. I held up a hand and smiled, and then he was in, focus on the game. I took some pictures on my phone, thinking they might be useful at some point in the future. His team won the game, as was expected. Danny the Flawless. So flawless, it was almost suspicious. I suppose it isn't fair to be suspicious of him just because he's a great person. There have to be some people like him in the world. Pardon? Did you say something? Nope. We crossed to the end of the field to congratulate Danny on his win, waiting for him to finish his team's victory speech before approaching. Danny! You did it! Good job! Peggy jumped into his arms as soon as he turned around. Thanks, Peggy. Congratulations! Thank you all for coming. It means a lot to me. Of course. It's the least we could do. So, are we going to go out for a celebratory drink or something? Uh... No, that's all right. I've got some work to do back at the hostel. Been neglecting my studies a bit. Really? That's not like you at all. Come on, a little drink wouldn't hurt. No, I'm fine. He said it firmly, and although he wasn't being rude, his humorless attitude killed the celebratory atmosphere. Well, okay. That's fine, then. I bet we've all got work to do anyways. Are we walking back together? He shook his head. I have a few other things to do on the pitch. Sorry. Ah, it's fine. Well, good game. I guess we'll head home then. It was very nice seeing you. Danny nodded and Peggy, Ashley, and I headed for the hostel. We got to the edge of the park when I patted my pockets. Something was missing. Oh no, my phone! Don't tell me you left it back there. Want us to come with you to get it? No, it's fine. It'll only be a moment. I'll just skip a little bit. Eh. I could go back, but you know what? It's just... That, that was the main thrust, was we're jealous. Oh. It's you again so soon. Peggy, Peggy, my dear. It's time for a hug. I had just changed out of my work uniform and sat down at my desk to write a letter to my mother when... My door slammed open and Peggy entered, walking like a zombie. Peggy, is... something wrong? She looked at me, tears feeling her eyes. Oh, Flynn! This world is full of heartless assholes who only think about themselves! Uh-oh, you figured it out? She shot me a glare and I chuckled. <laughs> Okay, but what really happened? She cast her eyes down at the floor and started drawing circles with her foot. My petition! I'm guessing you didn't manage to reach 5,000 signatures. <laughs> she gave a heavy sniff, confirming my thoughts. It's okay. Well, that's okay. Come here. I lifted my arms in what I hoped was a comforting way, and Peggy collapsed into me, clinging onto my shirt like a frightened kitten. I worked so hard! I know you did. No one else would have worked as hard as you did. You even helped and it wasn't enough! It's okay. Don't worry. This is a minor setback in the grand scheme of things. I know you. You'll pull through in no time and find another small way to help save the Earth. We don't have recycling here at the hostel, after all. You could badger James about that. <laughs> she sniffed and I stroked her hair. We stood for a few more minutes in silence. Um, do you want to sit down or something? 
She nodded into my shoulder, then Zombie walked over to my bed. She fell into it like a lump of clay. I know I can't give up now, but I'm just so frustrated. Nobody cares, but they should. If they cared a little bit more, the world could be so much better. But they don't want to feel bad, so they don't. There's a literal holocaust going down in North Korea, and does anyone care? No! They're all just... Worried about the little gardens. Well, people are suffering. And I can't even blame them is the sad part. I nodded and Peggy yawned. Oh, it's just not fair. And if I could... Peggy? I glanced at her. She was fast asleep, mouth open on my pillow. Now that I was looking at her, she had heavy bags under her eyes, and her hair looked more frazzled than usual. When was the last time she slept? In light of that, I let her have a nap on my bed. At least she didn't snore much. It wasn't until late that night that Peggy opened her eyes again. What? Where am I? You fell asleep in my room. Mid-sentence, might I add. Seriously? What time is it? Oh my god, nine already? I have work to do, I'm way off schedule. Peggy, how much stuff are you doing? Not that much. I mean, I'm a chemistry major and I like to study biology in my spare time, so there's a bit of homework from that. And then my part-time job, the volleyball team and the green clubs, and my mates have a band on weekends. You're doing all of that? How? She shrugged. You've got to take better care of yourself. You're going to wear yourself out. Even you, with your boundless energy, will re eventually reach your limit. Um, if you say so. I do. And are you eating well? I'm not just living off crisps and lager. I take vitamins. Peggy! Promise me you'll eat some vegetables before you go to sleep. And drink some water. But Flynn... Promise me! Fine, fine! I promise! I know you care about the world, but you have to care about you too. Make sure you get some sleep and try not to stress out. If you get stressed, come talk to me again. I'll hug you until you feel better. Peggy's face colored and she hopped off my bed. Uh, right, well, uh, thanks for the help. I'm gonna go now. Cheers! And she scuttled out of the room. With Peggy, it was always one thing or another. As exhausting as she could be, I honestly envied her. She had so many things she was passionate about, so many things she wanted to do and get better at. She had direction, which I lacked. It was easy to care about her. I wanted to see her succeed. Much like a brother probably would. Probably. Anyway, I should get back to work. Oh, Flynn, you're not brotherly at all, though. <laughs>